One of the things that makes AMD so great on Linux is actually having things done in an open source way. Not only having an open source kernel module, but an upstreamed open source kernel module. So there's a lot less fiddling around than you'd have if you're dealing with NVIDIA GPUs, where traditionally they did have everything proprietary. Nowadays, the kernel module is open source. But it's not upstream, so it doesn't really change anything. Also, they don't develop it in an open source way. They just tend to release the new version. And that's the code you get. So, that's great. And big part of the reason why it's not suitable to be upstreamed. I hope that at some point, NVIDIA maybe changes that. And maybe makes things, you know, a bit more convenient. But we'll see what happens, considering NVIDIA doesn't really care that much about the desktop space. Probably not going to happen because the gaming GPUs, maybe the compute space can convince them, but I really doubt it. But also unlike NVIDIA, AMD directly supports and most people can use the GPU drivers present in the Mesa project. Now, AMD VLK Open does exist, and that is a way you can have Vulkan support on your AMD GPU. This is made directly by AMD, but honestly, most of the time you're just way better off using RADV from Mesa anyway, and I don't really know anyone that recommends otherwise. Now, there is an open source driver for NVIDIA GPUs, available in Mesa. It's very much a work in progress, and NVIDIA people don't really help support it, get involved in it, things like that, so it's very much a grassroots development effort, but maybe NVIDIA will change their mind when it gets to a really good state. We will see. But that does not mean that AMD doesn't have proprietary drivers available on Linux. These are referred to as AMD GPU Pro. Now, do not be tricked into thinking that pro means professional. I guess you could argue that it kind of does because that's the only people that would ever actually use these, but the pro means proprietary. And as it says on the Arch Wiki, most users do not need these proprietary drivers. These included a proprietary implementation of OpenGL, Vulkan, a media framework, and things like that. Now, there is legacy OpenCL support as well. This was mainly important back when Mesa didn't really have a good OpenCL driver. Nowadays, it's still not perfect, but Rustical is really, really good compared to what they were doing previously, and is kind of the main thing that people direct you to anyway. Even then, AMD does have the open source Rock'em stack, so nowadays the legacy OpenCL part isn't really that big of a deal anyway. Now, since it's not something most normal users ever really need to interact with, like how NVIDIA has their releases of the NVIDIA proprietary drivers, did you know that AMD did release notes for their proprietary drivers as well? And recently, they made them a whole lot less proprietary. This is the release notes for Radeon Software for Linux 25.10.1. Now, don't be confused into thinking that means it's like GPU configuration tooling, anything like that. Radeon Software for Linux is basically just what they call AMD Pro. Consistent with AMD's commitment to open source software, we will be making the following changes to the composition of the Radeon Software for Linux releases, starting with 25.20. The Mesa Vulkan driver will be officially supported. This is the RADV driver. This is the one where if you have the Vulkan driver installed, which you probably do, is the one that you are using, along with Mesa Open OpenGL and multimedia support. The AMD proprietary OpenGL and Vulkan drivers will no longer be included in the release. So if you use the proprietary drivers, the proprietary OpenGL, this is referred to as OGPL, and the Vulkan support, the name can be a bit weird in some places, but generally called something like AMD VLK Closed, which is obviously the proprietary version of AMD VLK Open. And here's the thing. Even though those did exist, and you could use them, anybody using the AMD Pro drivers, that was not the reason why they were using them. That's just something that happened to come with them. I have never heard a single person say that those drivers are good, tolerable, or in any way better 
than what is presented within Mesa. And if that's the reason you're using the AMD Pro drivers, besides the case of your GPU just not working in Mesa because it's so new and it's so untested, besides that reason, there's basically no reason to use it specifically for that functionality. One thing you may have used it for though is AMF, the Advanced Media Framework, and this will no longer be included in the release. AMF users are advised to transition to VARPI slash Mesa Multimedia, and some examples of FFmpeg use cases with VARPI slash Mesa Multimedia are shown below. So hardware to code, hardware encode, and hardware transcode. I do not use FFmpeg. I have absolutely no idea what this absolutely disgusting line <laughs> that you write in your terminal is. If somebody knows what this means, please feel free to explain it down below. The point being is that the functionality is there with this other solution. Now, as you can probably guess, AMF is for hardware video acceleration. And this is where things got kind of weird for AMD. Because whilst the project isn't developed in an open source way, AMF is open source and has been open source for a very long time, is licensed under, I believe... Yes, an MIT license. The only things that are not open source are the parts that they don't have the rights to go on open source, but AMF itself is open source. But support for AMF doesn't really exist in a lot of software. And if you're using the Mesa AMD drivers, you don't really ever consider it being a thing. Really, the only time you're going to interact with AMF is with the AMD Pro drivers. And I guess the reason is if the only drivers that actively use AMF are AMD Pro and basically nobody is using AMD Pro, most people writing software that's going to interact in some way with hardware video acceleration aren't going to bother testing, aren't going to bother supporting the thing that basically nobody's actually using. So in a lot of cases, even if you were using the AMD Pro drivers, you wouldn't actually have access to AMF anyway. So <laughs> it basically didn't exist in a lot of different use cases. Take OBS, for example. So there is a patch set, at least there was a patch set, to have AMF support in OBS but it was never actually officially supported in OBS and because basically nobody's using it and the more general solution is as good or better now. There were issues in the past with quality, things like that, but that has been resolved. Now there's like even less of a reason to even bother supporting it on Linux. On the Windows side, it is entirely different. Like if you're using the AMD drivers, like you're using the AMD drivers. There's not just this whole different implementation that most people are using. So over there, support for it is well understood, is well accepted, but on Linux, basically don't replace what is already working. Like don't fix what isn't broken. And OBS is just the first example that comes to mind here. There is a ton of other projects where there's like an open issue or maybe like an open pull request where it's like, hey, do you want to add AMF support into the project? And they're just like, why? Like, why, 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 why exactly would we bother if maybe 1% of our users are using it? Why exactly? Right? Like, that, that's basically where it all comes down to. Like, if you have infinite money or if you have infinite time and just want to support everything under the sun, FFmpeg, for example, Great support for AMF because FFmpeg supports literally everything ever created because that is the whole goal of the project. But most of the projects are not going to go down that route. Now, to be fair, a lot of projects basically are just wrappers around FFmpeg and probably could support it if they wanted to. But, you know, uh, let's just forget about that part. When using a very recent AMD discrete GPU that is not very well supported by recent versions of Linux distributions, AMD recommends the most recent release of Radeon software for Linux. Many users find it convenient to migrate to AMD GPU Linux drivers available from Linux distributions once they've been updated to include support for the latest AMD GPU products. If you're on something fast moving like a Gen 2, like an Arch, 
like an open suit of tumbleweed. Usually you end up waiting maybe like a couple of weeks after release. Even then it's probably going to work day one. It's just a matter of is it going to work as well as it probably should. If you're on a Debian, if you're on an Ubuntu, well, you know, there's a very different situation there. So effectively what is being done here is the AMD Pro drivers are sticking around because there is still a use case for the AMD Pro drivers, you may want to use the legacy OpenCL drivers for some reason. Maybe they work better in some very specific context. But AMD has decided that a lot of the components of their proprietary driver are just worse than what is in Mesa. So there's just not really a reason to keep them around on Linux. Like... If the Mesa OpenGL and the Mesa Vulkan are going to be better and are going to have better testing, more users, just use those because you're already helping them out anyway. It doesn't really make any sense to have your own thing alongside that. Now, AMD VLK is not going anywhere, but I wouldn't be surprised if that slowly got phased out as well and they just went all in on the Mesa side. And then when it comes to hardware acceleration... Well, that's also fairly well supported across more software. AMF doesn't really have that much in the way of Linux support. So, again, it doesn't really make any sense to keep around. But AMD Pro itself isn't going away. It's just now of the niche use cases, there's even less niche use cases to make it even more niche. So, if you have a reason to use AMD Pro, I would be very curious to know why and what it is and if you can explain that to me the comment section down below would be very very pleasant and uh i might pin the comment if the use case is dumb and interesting enough because that would be fun anyway most people don't really use amd pro and weren't going to be affected by any changes like this anyway but um if you do now you know and if you don't, well, you know anyway, and knowing more things is usually a good thing. So, if you like the video, go like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to the Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and I am an AMD Pro.